What is up guys, welcome back to another video. Today I am again with Kathy Madeo, my teacher and student. Today we're gonna to be demonstrating a beginner's yoga class for absolute beginners. She's gonna be putting a lot of emphasis on alignment and how to do the positions right. We're also gonna be moving very slow. It's gonna be a short class for all the beginners that want to start yoga and they don't know where to start. This will be the perfect place to do so. You're going to need a couple of blocks to modify some of the positions or a couple of books that you can stack together again to modify some of the poses. She's going to be demonstrating the entire class with blocks. She is going to be leading the class and I'm going to be doing the intermediate version of those poses or without the props. That being said, I'll see you all in your mind. Alright guys, before we begin, I want to mention that we've, this is the second video that I filmed with Kathy. We did three yoga poses, the most common one and commonly misaligned. You can check that video over here. Those three poses are going to be in this class, so you want to go in depth on those positions. Please check it up all over here or down in the description. Without further ado, I leave it up to Kathy. We'll get started in child's pose. So coming onto your mat, widen your knees, your big toes will touch and walk your hands forward. Your torso rests in between your thighs. Now, alternatively, if your low back is sore here, you could bring your knees together and that will stretch your low back, but we'll have Gabo stay just where he is. And breathe here. Just take a moment to come into your body. Perhaps feeling what's stretching. Let your shoulders move away from your ears. We'll take one more breath here. Child's pose is our resting pose in our yoga practice. On your next inhale, come into tabletop position. You'll slide your shoulders on top of your wrists, your wrist crease parallel to the front of your mat, knees hips distance apart. Tabletop, belly pulls into your spine. All knuckles press down. Curl your toes under to stretch the soles of your feet. We'll take cow, so belly drops, shoulder blades draw in, gaze up. So extend your spine on your exhale, tops of your feet press, push the floor away, belly button pulls in. And we'll link these two together. So cat cow, toes curl under, gaze up on an inhale. Use your exhale, tops of your feet press, chin draws into chest. We'll do two more. Just flow with your breath here, finding some mobility through your spine as you move. Really push the floor away. Last one, toes curl under, belly drops, shoulder blades in, gaze up. Exhale, tops of your feet press, shoulder blades spread away. And come into tabletop. We'll walk our hands forward, pull your belly button up into your spine. You'll actually come all the way down into your belly, so you might need to slide your feet back into Sphinx pose. So on your forearms, forearms parallel, spread your fingers here. And we're in a kind of gentle back bend. So we want our shoulder blades to retract in towards the spine. That means move into the spine. Belly button pulls in and then push the floor away from you a little bit. That's it with those forearms. And activate your glutes. So engage your glutes here in your back bends and feel uh, your front line stretch. So the whole front of your torso. So this is a great posture to start as you deepen your back bends. We'll take one more breath here. Good, from here, drop your chest down. We'll slide our hands underneath our biceps for Cobra Pose Bhujangasana. So we wanna resist the shoulders rolling forward. So draw your shoulder blades up and towards into your spine. A gentle push of the floor and think of pulling your chest through and forward. So we use those latissimus dorsi muscles to depress the shoulders down. Spread your fingers. So very kind of challenging upper back core, back muscles. One more breath or engaging here. 
We'll come on down. Curl your toes under, have your knees down. We'll lift and push up into downward facing dog. So feet hips distance apart in your downward facing dog. Try to actively press your knuckles into the mat. It might feel nice to pedal out the feet here a little bit, bend one leg so you can really stretch the opposite leg and we'll just gently switch. You can go at your own pace here. Breathing. And then we'll find some stillness in our downward facing dog. Come up onto your tippy toes. Take a soft bend in your knees. You can really feel that anterior or forward tilt through the pelvis. Feel your low spine really lengthen. Gently push the floor away. Another breath. And then begin to straighten your legs and perhaps feel right at that moment where your pelvis wants to tuck under. And that's kind of your edge and you'll just stay right there. Another breath, upper arm bones roll away from your ears. We'll come up onto our tippy toes and begin to walk to the front of your mat into Uttanasana or forward fold. I'll have my feet hips distance apart. I'm gonna slide two blocks underneath my hands and you can take as deep of a bend as you need to to get an anterior tilt through the pelvis. And I really like to think of more compression here, chest to thighs versus being here where we're taking that pelvis in a posterior tilt. So bend your knees as much as you need to. You can slide two blocks under your hands and breathe here. Your forward fold, we're stretching the whole back line of your body, everything on the posterior side. One more breath. Inhale, half lift. So you can push your fingertips into the floor, shins or your prop. Exhale, fold in. Inhale, rise. Arms sweep all the way up. Urdhva Hastasana, upward salute. And exhale, we'll come into mountain pose. And we'll really take this posture here. <laughs> Reach the crown of your head up. Firm your belly button into your spine, front ribs down. Engage through your quads to lift your kneecaps up. Mountain pose, Tadasana. Such a great pose to learn posture for your body. One more breath here. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, hinge and fold at the hips. You can take a soft bend in your knees and catch the blocks. Inhale, halfway lift. Shift your weight to your right foot. We'll step your left foot back. You can take your blocks with you. Drop your back knee and place it right underneath the back hip. So we're getting two kind of 90 degree angle uh, with shape with the legs. Bring your hands to your hips and take a posterior tilt. So that means to draw the pelvis under. We're kind of isolating the stretch in the back leg hip flexor here. From here, you can reach your arms up and breathe. And this is a great position for those newer to lunge or to yoga. It provides a lot of stability and you still get that hip flexor stretch. We'll move into just a little deeper of a variation. You can bring your hands down here as you shift the front foot forward or slide the back knee back. And from here, we get into a little bit of a back bend. So really engage the back leg glute maximus muscles. So squeeze your glutes there, pull your belly button up into your spine. And from here, we'll reach the arms up and think of your shoulders stacking over your hips. And you could even lean the hips a little bit more forward if that feels good. Take one more breath here and come into runner stretch. So I'll catch the blocks here with my hands straight in your front leg. Now we want to get the thigh bone, the right thigh bone into the hip socket. So most of us have to slide the heel back. Inhale, halfway lift. So draw your shoulder blades in and exhale, we'll fold in. Think of compressing your belly button or your torso rather to the straight leg. We'll just get some flexibility tips here. If you really flex that front foot, you'll get a deeper stretch through the gastrocnemius muscle, that's your calf muscle. And you can do a little kind of PNF exercise by dragging your right heel towards your right hip isometrically, creating a little bit of tension through your hamstrings. Breathe. Now bend your front leg and take your left hand underneath your left shoulder and we'll just get a gentle twist here as we peel the right arm open. 
Inhale. And as you exhale, you'll step forward. So curl your back toes under, come into your forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. And we'll switch sides. So weight shifts to the left as you step your right foot back. Back knee drops down. Legs are at that 90 degree angle. Hands con come onto your hips. We'll take that posterior tilt of the pelvis. So you're just tucking everything under here. From here, you'll reach your arms up. Gabo's getting a good workout today. <laughs> I'm dying to do <laughs> Beginner yoga doesn't always mean easy, right? Especially when we're this mindful of everything that's working. It we'll bring, gets easier. <laughs> yeah. We'll bring our hands down and work into that kind of different variation where we're adding a back bend into our low lunge. Squeeze your right glute muscles, reach your arms up, hips go down. So you're really feeling the one leg stretch away from the other. Belly button pulls into your spine. Use your exhale, we'll come into runner stretch. Hands come down. I like to curl my back toes under for stability, but you don't have to. You can slide that left thigh back a little bit. We'll inhale, take a half lift, draw your shoulder blades in, and then exhale, fold in. Now this is essentially a forward fold here. So your upper back and the shoulder blades will start to spread away. Breathing. And yours might look a little bit more like this, and that's perfect too. Take one more breath and drag that left heel back towards your left hip. Good. And we'll bend the front leg, come into our twist. So right our, uh, hand underneath the right shoulder, left shoulder peels open. Release your left hand down. We'll come all the way forward into our standing forward fold, Uttanasana. Breathing here. And inhale all the way up. Upward salute, arms reach up. And exhale, mountain pose. How are you feeling? Feel good. Awesome. <laughs> so those were uh, standing neutral poses. We're gonna start to open the hips now. So we'll shift the weight over to our right foot. Take a big step back of your left foot landing in warrior two legs. So get a nice long stance on your mat. Your front heel lines up to your center back arch. And you can widen the arms apart. So we'll drop the left hip down, pull the right hip up and keep your front knee tracking over your front toes. Warrior two, you're gazing past your middle front finger. The belly button pulls in, shoulders stack over pelvis. One more breath here. Push through your front foot to straighten your front leg. Heel toe your back foot in just a little bit. And I'm actually gonna grab my block and slide it to the outside of my right shin bone here. We're coming into triangle pose. So we'll lean forward, really lengthen your right side body. That's it. And then place your right hand on the block where you can rest it on your shin. Left arm reaches up towards the ceiling. So from here, imagine that your left frontal hip point is turning and opening to the ceiling and squeeze your right glute medius muscle. Feel your inner thighs and your hamstrings of the front leg stretch. One more breath. Inhale up through warrior two. So bend your front leg, bring your hands to your hips. We're gonna take a big step forward. Roar. <laughs> Tadasana mountain pose. And we'll switch sides. I'm just gonna prep my blocks. Shift your weight over to your left foot, big step back of that right leg. Getting our feet prepared for our warrior two. And as Gabo takes the pose, I'll just talk a little bit about alignment here. Your thigh bones, your femur bones are externally rotating in the hip socket, meaning moving away from the torso. So that's why you're feeling perhaps a stretch here. Shoulders stack on top of pelvis, front ribs drop down. Just breathe. You might feel your quadriceps burning because they're contracting while lengthening. One more breath. We'll straighten out the front leg. Bring your hands to your hips. Heel toe that back foot in a little bit. Get nice and long. We'll reach our arms out and come into our triangle pose. So lean forward. Remember that right hip is staying open. So keep it open rather than bringing it forward. You can catch a block. 
Right arm reaches up towards the ceiling, shoulders stack, and both shoulders roll away in external rotation. Gaze up or right to the side. One more breath. We'll inhale up, bend the front leg. And this time we're going to turn our left foot to the left and prep for a wide leg forward fold. I'm going to grab the blocks and place them here. So we'll keep our hands on our hips and I want you to feel this kind of anterior tilt through the pelvis. So it's tipping forward. Come down with as long of a spine as you can. Now at a certain point, let your hands release. They can catch the floor or catch any props that you might be working with. So we have a tendency here to um, kind of lock out the knees. So maybe a little subtle bend in the knees here so that the muscles around the joint work. Pull your belly button up into your spine. Breathing here. So you can think your upper back is in flexion. So you can allow the shoulder blades to spread away and those rhomboids to stretch a little bit. Feel the backs of your legs stretch, hips stack right over your ankles. One more breath. Inhale, halfway lift, pull your belly button up into your spine, bring your hands to your hips and we'll come all the way up to stand. Pivot your front foot forward and we'll come to stand at the front of the mat in mountain pose. All right, we'll play with a standing balancing posture now that our hips are nice and open. Let's bring our feet hips distance apart here. We're coming into tree pose. So shift your weight over to your left foot without kind of hiking that left hip out. So keep it hugging in, good. And you'll bend your right knee and we'll turn the right knee out. So this would be our kind of most stable way to take tree pose here with the heel resting on the um, inner shin. Or you can begin to bring the foot up to the shin bone, sole of the foot. Or you'd wanna reach down and grab the top of the foot and place it to the inside of the thigh. Now push your foot into the thigh, thigh into the foot, and we'll drop the right hip down a little bit here. Hands come to prayer. And once you have your balance, you can play with reaching your arms up. Feel that external rotation of your upper arm bones. Your arms are in kind of a V shape as the pinky side of the finger turns in. If you lose your balance, that's okay. That's all part of the practice. One more breath. Turn your right knee forward and we'll release. Hands down, foot down. Shake it out a little bit <laughs> and we'll switch sides. Weight shifts over to the right. We can take any one of these three ways to take your tree pose. Left toes point down and you're dropping your left hip. Hug your hips in. And then once you have your balance, arms up. So we talk about the gaze, which is you know where your eyes are looking, are really important in the yoga practice, finding something to look at, the single pointed focus. So especially in our balancing postures, gaze just past your nose, maybe find a spot on the floor. One more breath, turn your left knee forward and we'll release down, come into our mountain pose. Inhale, big sweep of your arms up, Exhale, hinge and fold all the way down. Inhale, halfway lift. We'll step our left foot back and begin to heel toe your right foot out to the right. So we're coming into lizard lunge. Let's drop our back knee down and uncurl the toes here. Now, if you were using your blocks, you could come onto your forearms. So I'll have Gabo work his way down into his forearms for a full lizard lunge here. You could prop up this way. And if this was even too low, you could just certainly stay up on your hands here. Now I want you to hug isometrically your right knee into your right shoulder a little bit. Yeah, so working those adductors here a little bit isometrically. Feel the back leg stretch behind you. And eventually, I even like to rock a little bit side to side, get some movement mm -hmm. in these poses, right? Absolutely. Yeah, sometimes we get like stuck. It's nice to move around. There's like over 20 muscles that cross the hip joint, right? Take a couple more breaths here. 
right and we will switch sides so curl your back toes under lift the back knee big step forward and then we'll just shift the weight over and switch sides so left foot is close to the side edge of your mat I also like to take my time getting into these deep poses there's no sense kind of rushing in because those muscles just kind of contract and we'll set up Gabo can start working <laughs> on to his, uh, his forearms here. So hug that left knee in a little bit, and then we'll work the upper body on this side. So draw your shoulder blades towards the spine, pull your chest through. It's very much like that Sphinx pose that we started with in the beginning of class. Now also, if you think of your back leg, the more you squeeze your right glute maximus muscle that will stretch, the opposite muscle, the hip flexors of the front leg. We'll add some movement, little mobility here. Kind of think of like a string instrument of those muscles around the hip joint. Great, and then this time we're going to go to the back of our mat. So you'll take a big step back of that left foot. We'll cross our ankles and work our way onto our seat. We'll take a couple seated poses here as we cool down. So the first one is called Half Lord of the Fishes. We'll bend the right leg so the knee is pointing forward. Take your left sole of the foot, place it to the outside of the leg. You could always prop yourself up on a blanket here. And hug, just as Gabo's doing, hug your left knee into your chest. Sweep your left hand behind you, catch it like a kickstand and then reach your right arm up and hold here. So we're basically taking a twist and I want you to use your muscles to do that. So think of your right external obliques turning and your left internal obliques, they kind of turn and twist the torso. Now also keep hugging your left knee into your chest. Now from here, you could hug your knee, which I'll take. I'll have Gabo bend his arm and take his right tricep and hook it. Good, and so for twisting, you wanna think of an upward lift through your spine. So crown of the head lifts up, shoulders stack right on top of hips. If you can turn your head towards your left shoulder, that's great. And then keep actively pressing the mounds of your left toe into the mat. So whole body's engaged here. <laughs> One more breath. Now we always inhale to come out of twists because the diaphragm fills. So inhale, we're gonna do a real fun transition here, ready? So sweep your arms up, lift your hips up, and just circle around to switch sides. Ooh. Now, <laughs> if that's not happening for you today, that would be normal, so just switch sides. <laughs> okay, so left knee points forward, hug your right knee in, sole of the right foot is down. Big sweep of your right hand behind you. Come up onto your fingertips. So think of that like a kickstand. Left arm up. Lengthen through your spine first. And then use your obliques to turn as you keep hugging your right knee into your chest. You can hug the knee here or hook the left tricep to the outside of your right thigh. You're working to ground both of those sit bones down know that that's a challenge when the legs are bent but do your best keep reaching the crown of the head up lengthen through your spine and we'll inhale to come out that was so fun let's just come out that way yeah <laughs> all, right. <I'm> down. <laughs> all right now straighten out your legs just shake your legs out. So this is a uh, staff pose, Dandasana, palms down, great kind of neutralizing pose as we transition. We'll bend our right leg, turn the right knee out to the side. We're coming into Janu Shirsasana. So you want your hips to be straight across your mat. So Gabo, I'll have you actually pull your left thigh bone back. Exactly, good. We'll reach our arms up. And there's a bit of a twist here. Turn your chest towards your straight leg and it's a forward fold. So anterior tilt to the pelvis, forward tilt to the pelvis as you hinge and fold here. And breathe. So, no, you stay there, Gabo. Many <laughs> of us will be up here and that's all good. So you could also use a strap around the sole of your left foot. You could even lengthen here a little bit. 
It's more important to get this anterior tilt through your pelvis for your forward fold. Otherwise, when you tuck the pelvis, you're actually shortening your hamstrings. You're going in the opposite direction, right? Yeah, we don't want that. You got a good no face. Yeah, <laughs> That's the first time that I do it, actually. <laughs> We'll take quite a few breaths here. So as we begin to reach the floor, our body needs a little bit more time to access these deep muscles. So when you're doing your seated yoga postures, it's a good idea to hold them for at least 60 seconds, 60 seconds to 90. These are cooling postures. So just come into your body, stay connected to your breath. Think of dropping your right rib cage down a little bit. And on your next inhale, we'll slowly climb on up. Turn your right knee to point up to the ceiling. We'll straighten out your leg and switch sides. So I, I bend and point the knee first so you can access that full rotation through the femur bone. And we'll slide the top of the left foot in. Make sure our pelvis is straight across. Perfect. Reach your arms up. Belly button pulls in, turn your chest, hinging through the hips. All the way down here. And again, you might be right here and that is just perfect. So everything is relative, right? And that's one of the beautiful things about the yoga practice. It's like a self journey. It's a journey into the self. There's uh, a lot of acceptance that needs to happen. A lot of awareness. So it's a never ending journey. Feel your right ribs lift up to the ceiling, left ribs come down, accessing that twist a little bit deeper. Just soften here. So much of flexibility is surrender, even in those active moments. Couple more breaths. Next inhale, we'll begin to walk our hands, lift our torso up. Take that left knee, we'll point it forward, straighten out your leg. And you can just kind of windshield wiper your legs side to side. All right, we'll move the hips to the center of our mat and make our way down onto our backs for Shavasana, our final resting pose. <laughs> yes. So you might be surprised, but our Shavasana does have alignment. So point your feet towards the corner edges of your mat and just let them splay out to the side. Lift your chest up, draw your shoulder blades in towards your spine, palms face up, arms away from the side body. And I brought up that word surrender. So we'll do that here, Shavasana. back into your body and just deepen your breath deep inhale in through your nose you can even exhale out through your mouth bring your fingers in towards your palms and rotate your hands in one direction rotate them in the opposite direction your next in breath take a good morning stretch so reach your arms up point your toes 
On your exhale, bend your knees and roll to your right side. So we'll pause here in the fetal position. So our Shavasana, otherwise known as corpse pose, represents death and the fetal position represents birth. So a reminder that in any moment we have the opportunity to awaken. Start anew. Use your left hand. We'll push ourselves up and we'll end in a seated posture. You can sit up on a prop, cross-legged. We'll close down our eyes for a moment. Nice long spine here and just feel the effects of your practice. In gratitude, we'll bring our hands to heart center in prayer. Take an inhale in, exhale, bow in. Namaste. Oh. <laughs> that was awesome. 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 Cool. Thank you so much. I really hope you guys enjoy this class. Uh, if you have taken my previous beginners classes on YouTube, you might know that I, I don't tend to go so much towards the beginner side. I go a little bit faster. So this is an amazing chance for you guys to really practice a what is a true, true beginner class so that you can take my other classes and be a little bit more prepared. As I said, she is my yoga instructor. I got my 200 hour uh, yoga certificate during COVID. So if you want to become a yoga teacher, uh, all the information for Kathy to contact her is down in the description. I took it online at your own pace, which is an amazing opportunity. And also if you want to follow her work, uh, she has several courses. Uh, she teaches online, she does live on IG, on YouTube as well. Again, all the information is going to be down in the description. And if you enjoyed this video, like, share, subscribe, all the YouTube stuff, and I'll see you all next week. Much love. But back. I feel you. Mm -hmm. I always forget that. Okay. <laughs> I feel like you need a towel. Gabo needs a towel yeah. off. Yeah, that's really crazy. <laughs> like, <laughs> he must be like a little yoga master. Now he's getting very excited. <laughs> I <laughs> mean... <laughs>